what I try to bring to a dance floor, and whether I get it right all the time or not, kind of bring a sexy, sweaty, clubby vibe to a dance floor. That's what I try and do as a DJ musically. And, and I want it to be funky, and I want it to be sexy, and I want it to be dancey. He's got that drive about him. I just love his music. He knows what people want. Makes me crazy, and that's it. Has he got it? I think he has, you know. I think he's got that slightly little bit more. Every year, DJ Mag does a Top 100 DJs poll. The DJs would almost kill to get into the Top 100, but for Lawler, at number 75 in 1999, by 2000, he was up to number 25. 2001, he was number nine, so his, his career is definitely still on the up. Lawler used to run illegal parties under the motorway in Birmingham. They were the young, naive, exciting days of not really knowing what my consequences were, but just doing it whatever, you know, because it was the only way for me to play my records out in front of people and nothing else really mattered, so. We're going to um, a place where I did all the tunnel parties. Really good memories, proper memories. This, this was my childhood, this was my growing up, you know. This is it, yeah. And we used to block both ends of these off with really huge black, thick curtains, yeah. It used to be really hard to see Steve unless you fight all the way to the front. Um, we were always there doing his mixing. From the roof, we hung camo netting. Just used to be the sound more than anything you used to remember. This is where the decks were, this end. It just used to be absolutely amazing. And all the graffiti that we did seems to have been covered up or it's gone now. Best years of my life, <laughs> what I remember. By the sound of them, they were, they were sort of monstrous do's and a typical example of how sort of determined and tenacious Lawler is. I was really passionate about it and the more passionate you are about something, if it doesn't work, the more it kind of pisses you off. And I put that much effort into it, I wasn't prepared to give up basically. It was a hard struggle at some points. At that point where I thought I was going to start selling my records to get a bit of money, the Cafe Mambo thing came along. And I had a great summer in Ibiza. And out there I met loads of promoters that asked me to come back to England and play for them in their clubs. And that's when it all started, really. When I first met Steve, um, I, know I personally hadn't heard of him um, as a DJ. Um, but he's really taken off the last year and a half. But to be honest, he's, he's worked really hard. He's been all over the world since I've known him. I've been seeing Lisa for just over a year and a half. She's my sanctuary, she's my sanity. If I've been away touring for four weeks and I'm really tired when I get home, it's just so great to come and see that one special person in my life and just relax with. How would you describe him as a person? Um, <laughs> very determined, um, lovable and caring, um, and a bit hot-headed at times. How are you? Friday night is uh, my own night, Harlem Nights at the end, where I play for six, seven hours in the main room. And then Saturday, I'm doing a gig in Slovenia. The Lights Out is a new album, and this month it's actually the Lights Out launch party, so we're going to add all the extra decor parts in there, get some performers in there, do the whole intro thing, do, the, do some of the effects that we've got going on. I don't really like this kind of music, but this guy really is doing it for me tonight. At the moment, if it was Lawler and Sasha, I'd be going to see Lawler. Tonight he's reaffirmed my faith in clubbing. foot nothing, do you know what I mean? There's no way I would cause any trouble, but if it comes my way, I'm certainly not going to back down from it, that's for sure. Basically, I was DJing this club, booked to play there, turned up, 
Um, I've been DJing for half an hour. And then the guy that owns the club, some rich, yeah, some rich guy who owns the club, comes up to me and says, uh, please don't play any cuss words or any swearing words. You're going live out on radio. And no one asked me, no one told me that I was going out live on radio. And uh, the guy came back and just was pointing his finger over there saying, do not play any swear words like this. And he gave it a bit of attitude. So towards the end of the night, my last record, I played this really filthy a cappella, kind of had every swear and cuss word in the book. Oh, I love your big juicy cock. Oh, take my big bodacious tits. I said, fuck me now. And the guy came over and chucked me off the decks and chucked me out of the club. And then uh, the next day I find out the club got fined $25,000 by the radio station. So uh, I'd say that was revenge is sweet and I'd say that, that wasn't trouble that came. That I caused, that was trouble that came my way. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> Wouldn't you agree, please? Plate beans are really important for a breakfast. And for some reason, you can't get them anywhere else in the world apart from England. I'm going to fill a record bag with plate beans. I'm going to take three record bags, have two records, and one with beans in. Cheers. We just got here literally five minutes ago. Still no sleep. Never standing still, mate. Always moving. Hands down, totally honest, I would really like to be patient and I'm not. No, Jesus, that's definitely a fault of mine. Uh, no, I'm not patient. One of the reasons why I actually really like Slovenia is because it's sort of, it's, it's really its own place. And like the whole thing with what the, the war that went on in Yugoslavia, they didn't want to be involved in it at all. And uh, you can kind of feel that here. That people here are very chilled out and at the same time very intense. Like when you see them in a club, when they go for it, they go for it big time. And, and, and yet you, you walk around here and as you can see, it's really chilled out and really relaxing. Perfect. He's going to be a star. He likes the camera. Yeah, very much. <laughs> I see he's bored of the camera now. He's seen a girl. Great. He's seen a girl across the park. People are very excited. This is the first, like, this trans party of the summer and Everybody, everybody wants to, to come here. Finally, I have the chance to listen to Steve Lawler here in my place, my home place. It gives me something hard or something dark or something unusual, something, I don't know. I just can flow with my imagination and go, I don't know where. Many people come from and Croatia and Italy. I know many people come tonight. Down there on the beach is a pre-party before Steve Lawler is coming in the great place in Slovenia, like Ambassada Gavioli. Kadali in the shoes of the early hundreds of the vice. That's a day in the mix, was a mask in the shop at Maki. The middle of the first 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 of What's the best thing about Steve Lawler is his ass. He's always moving like this or that. You feel inside of a dream. You dance all night long and you don't know why, you don't know when, but you have to dance. <laughs>
wicked club. Just what I mean about the crowd, they're so on it, man. They're like so up for it. They're intense, right? It went off. It was wicked in there. I loved it. <laughs> loved it. Best part of the job. Best part of the job. That right there is exactly what it's all about. Exactly. That that moment when you're playing records, that is what it's all about. Definitely. <laughs> I love this job. <laughs>